What up traders, what up investors, Ken here from Dyslexic Investor and we're going to be looking at the overall stock price of Tesla and what Goldman Sachs is projecting and it gives a price target of 864 which is a pretty precise uh, price target and we're going to try to look at the chart on how they maybe have come up to that price. Goldman Sachs is a little bit more fundamentally driven so there's probably a lot more uh, of their fundamental projections and analysis into that. Um, so basically the overall thesis is that the EV market is the basically is taking off and this is in a long-term growth projection, um, which a lot of people who have owned Tesla have already said that for many years, but it's just good that you start hearing it from a lot of the investing community. So you're gonna see a lot more institutionals putting in money into Tesla, hopefully. Um, and so being the uh, overall new trend of EV market, and of course Tesla is uh, on the forefront and on the top leading edge of this trend, basically being the number one and best competitor in it. Um, this is a huge market for them and they can their earnings potential is pretty much uh, the limit of the sky in the sense of if what they're able to capture and what they're able to bring in. Um, and this is why they're giving such a high price target and such, uh, such a high multiple moving into even this downturn of COVID-19. And that is due to the, Fair, the uh, Fairmont factory closed down in California, um, but they're actually making more ventilators and things like that. The China, the, uh, sorry, the uh, factory in China is basically back to full production. And then hopefully on the next earnings call where we get updates about the uh, factory in outside of uh, Germany or Belgium, not Belgium, sorry, Berlin, Germany, uh, and then looking at the potential of what battery day is gonna look like with all this uh, social distancing and the lack of having large groups, they're probably just gonna webcast it in uh, someone's office and just show off these fantastic batteries if they're able to do so. Um, and just everyone just wear masks, it'll be kind of funny looking. But I hope they actually come out with this battery day because that's again, the huge component behind the EV market. They currently are kind of cutting ties, I believe, from Panasonic, who makes their basically their batteries right now. Um, but they're looking at this new battery tech. This is going to propel not just the cars. This is going to be the propel the overall um, the solar wall or the Tesla uh, power wall. Um, and again, they're be able to hopefully ramp up production and just make these uh, as fast as possible. All right. So then we're going to look at a wonderful trade. Again, from the Wall Street bets, boop, 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 boop. Uh, we're looking at the article, uh, Papa Musk ain't taking us to the moon, he's taking us to Mars, which again, this is kind of representing of the kind of week that Tesla has had. They're up quite a bit uh, just this week. If you, there's a huge gap up. We'll look at the chart here in a second. Um, so basically, this guy bought a call, five contracts, basically up nearly 650%-ish, pretty substantial. The calls that are currently trading at are $49.23, so it's around $5,000 a contract. And they're expiring actually tomorrow. Um, not sure when he bought them, um, but I'm pretty sure they're shorter dated. Uh, he bought them like less than a week ago, um, but we'll look at what potentially could uh, basically have increased his money basically $21,000 from his initial Probably he looks like he paid for it. He made the current value is around twenty four thousand. He probably paid maybe five, less than five for these uh, contracts uh, together. Um, so kudos for him. That's fantastic. Um, so let's go ahead and jump to the charts, and we'll be right back. All right. So we were looking at the charts here, looking at Tesla on the daily chart. They're saying they're seeing uh, the price target again. They don't give a time frame on when the price is going to be executed or when they're going to look at it. It's just as a forward-looking guidance. So they're saying around, they're well not around. They're saying five. Let's just put a little. They're, I think they're saying exactly the do 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 eight sixty four. All right, let's create that. So where does that land us? So that basically lands up us up at the next, basically the gap up where we had initially, um, and that's where we had a lot of the breakouts happen. 
So this is a very interesting zone because this is basically not the next leg higher. The next leg higher will look at some Fibonacci retracements here really quick. Put these down like this. We've broken past the six, uh, the six, the, this one here. This is the, can't read it. All right, the 618, that's what it is. The 618, and the next, basically, the, the on the, if you're looking to straight fibs, uh, is 78.6, which is going to be the price target of $833.71. Um, and then they have their price target of 8864 So looking forward on potentially that. And for the downside, of course, the downside is going to basically the initial first Retracement is the 50% retracement, which is going to be pretty heavy, and that's where it broke out here on the gap up of this week. Let's go here. So the gap up of this week, so basically we we'll come down to 650 would be the first leg of support. And then I have my line here at 611 for really strong support, and then really strong support hopefully around the 200. I don't know if we're going to get, ever get down there in the anytime soon, but again, anything can happen. No one has a crystal ball. So looking forth on what could happen with a Tesla stock here. And then the individual who traded that uh, call, which was, I think it was tomorrow's, and he bought the 710 call. Let's double check. He bought the 710 call. Look at that. I'm, I'm smart. 710 call. And that is really deep in the money right now. And it's around $40. Ish. So it probably bought it at a higher price or sold it at a higher price when they posted that. Um, but we can go and look at on how um, we're going to move that to, to red. So there we go. And then we can pop up here. So this was uh, pretty significant. So you can kind of see here that the that option did get up to $51. Um, so we're on a little over $5,100. Um, just in the last couple days and basically kind of leveling off here um, and this is probably not going to go too much higher from this this standpoint due to the fact of time decay it is it, it, the, it's expiring tomorrow so that theta will kick in it's just going to ramp up for anything that was out of the money and then you'll see the prices kind of really flow in once you start looking at the charts or looking at the, uh, the closer getting closer to the bell on Friday afternoon. Um, again, anything could happen. We're currently at 758, so we're basically nearly $18 higher, sorry, $13 higher from where we are right now. Um, we're having the high of the week at uh, during trading hours at uh, $760, so only $2 off of that right in the uh, after hours trading, again, anything can happen. The market is kind of rallying overall. Um, the futures are up nearly up 2% um, just after the close, and they're looking at testing their weekly highs as well, um, which is a great indicator for some strength coming in. Uh, we'll look at some couple other indicators here on Tesla once we go through a couple of these charts here. The daily chart, uh, the momentum is just printing higher. Um, it's not anywhere, in, it's getting near its RSI over bot, but again, it's Tesla, so that sign is not usually the most significant. Um, the take of money flow, this is really important. The money is starting to come back into Tesla. Like we said that people are actually seeing it, people are seeing the EV market uh, being a trend uh, and the potential fear of missing out. On the weekly chart, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, it does have that resistance. I'm looking at around 786 potentially. And these are some propulsion dots that kind of builds up the momentum to be able to push through. We do like to see it. It is on the lighter blue here on the momentum side here, and this would be a significant uh, push higher. Because again, the earnings is just around the corner on the 29th, so we're less than like two weeks out from that, which is uh, not that far off. And then we're gonna go switch this to the daily chart. And this kind of sums up some things here too. A uh, couple price targets at like the 690 again, that was the low of the week. Um, and then we're looking at the high of the week, maybe to 800 potentially. If we have a great close in tomorrow, we, I don't see any, I don't see a reason why we can't hit uh, near 800 um, for a potential run into earnings. Um, because I think 
the last two earnings, it has been literally gangbusters, and the earnings have just skyrocketed the stock substantially. Basically, the start of the earnings of last October, it just hasn't really looked back really since then, since the overall sell-off. It never even got down to these levels. It got close, got to like 350, but that was still, we're trading at, we're talking about 260 in October before its earnings. Like, And I think people are looking for really high hopes, uh, potentially uh, trying to get back in. We did wash out a lot of weak hands here. So you see a lot of that selling here, a lot of red, uh, the volume wasn't that great as I thought it would have been because we'd have so much long-term, or I don't know if they're long-term investors jumping in, but a lot of volume jumping in here. And it didn't look like they traded that hands very much. It looks like a lot of people actually held their stock. So it's now starting to pay off and rebound from its basically its 200 exponential moving average around like the 455 level and just starting to kick back higher again. We have the eight uh, exponential moving average cutting into the 21 and that is a great sign for potential strength moving forward. And we already underlined and showed the support and resistance moving forward for Tesla. And last chart I want to show you guys is the basically, I don't want to do the daily, let's do the week, there, yeah, there we go. So this is the, the only thing that I'm, I want to say concerned of, um, that we had so much of a gap up on this week. Uh, basically, so what was the beginning of the week? What was the first day? It was the 13th. So basically, we had a small gap up over the weekend and then a huge gap up from between here and here. Um, I could see us most likely um, if it's just a blah Friday, it's just trading sideways and but maybe potentially coming down to like the the low or towards the low end of the week just to the fact of just need to slow down. Um, the sprint from here to there has been a lot of energy. Um, there hasn't been a huge increase in volume. We do see the increase in volume on the 13th into the 14th, which is a nice little sign because you can look down here on it's a little bit slightly maybe 30%, 25% more on the average day of volume. It is all green, meaning it's potentially pushing it higher. Um, all good signs. Um, again, I own Tesla for long-term holds. I'm, I'm not, I don't trade Tesla anymore. I'm just, I bought some, again, around the 365, 355 level when it came down here, and I thought that was a blessing. So I'm just holding it long-term and seeing where we go from there. Guys, if you have any comments, questions, please leave it in the description down below or the comment section. I greatly appreciate it. Again, this is Ken from the Dyslexic Investor, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.